the opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to For the Public Good. We're the show that tries to identify corporations, institutions, and individuals who are doing good and are doing it well. And this evening, I'm really happy to be able to share a microphone and cameras with uh, Luis Petzold. And uh, also, he's brought with him Mark Whitaker. And they're with the Up With People NGO worldwide uh, that I'm going to tell you too much about them now because I'm going to let them tell the whole story. <laughs> good to <laughs> Luis, see you, it's good to see you again. Mark, it's nice good to meet you. you, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, they're here in the Philippines uh, to do a lot of community service things, but you're capping all of that off with a big show Saturday night. Correct. And uh, we're going to mention that uh, two or 17 times throughout this hour <laughs> here so that you'll be sure to know where it is, and I hope you'll all go out and see it because it's surely for a worthy cause. Um, Luis, tell me a little bit about what is up with people. I, you know, it's a, it's a really neat name, <laughs> but what, what do you do? Well, again, Larry, thank you for inviting us. It's such a pleasure to be here again mm -hmm. with you. Uh, up with people, it's an international NGO. It exists for 47 years, mm -hmm. so it was created in 1965. And the main, goal, the main goal of the organization is to bring people together. And one of the biggest ways we do this is by music, using mm -hmm. music as a way to communicate. And we travel around the world with young people ages 18 to 29 from 20, 30 different countries. We're visiting different places in the world. Everywhere we go, we do a lot of volunteer work. We do community service. So that's about 60, 70 percent of our time in each and every community. We also do live with local host families. So it's an opportunity for the group to experience the culture and learn from the ones that know it very well. And it's, at the end, Up With People, it's an educational program. We have, for instance, even universities that grant us six months of college credit for anyone to join our program traveling around the oh world. Oh, really? Really? So it's not like, you know, as a businessman, I've been all over the world, and I know mm -hmm. a lot about airports, taxis, mm -hmm. and hotels. Yes. <laughs> but you're actually staying with families in every country that you go to or every city that you go to. That's correct. I think Mark can talk to you about m a little bit more about that because also it's an opportunity that we have um, to create an impact, share our cultures, and at the same time learn about all the great things that the families have to offer. Exactly. And, you're, and you're, your title is tour manager, right? So That's correct. You're, you're taking 100 people from many countries you're not putting them on the same bus, but <laughs> <laughs> you're getting them somewhere. What? What? Tell me some of the interesting things that go on with that. How? Oh, how's wow. it working for you? Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> Where to start? You know, um, to do what we do. You know, combining like Luis was saying, the community service, the host family living, the international participants, the education, and then to cap it all off with a performance, so two or three, or sometimes four times a week, mm -hmm. in Asia, in Europe. Latin America, United States, all over. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got some fun stories. Well, I'll <laughs> bet you do. And you guys have been now in the Philippines. Uh, Luis and I, last month, yes. we uh, did a show on the Building Bridges show that yes. I do for it YouTube. Yes, it was a great show. And uh, it, was, it was good to hear about all of the things that you're doing. And we couldn't talk very much ab at that time mm -hmm. about the performances here because everything hadn't been s uh, nailed down yet, I guess. Yes. First of all, you said uh, you've been doing some community work here mm -hmm. in the time. Can you tell me, just give me some of the details of the things you're yeah, doing? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's one of the, our biggest uh, pleasures when we come to the Philippines mm -hmm. is the opportunity to interact face-to-face -face with the local community. Mm -hmm. And normally, we're looking for also underprivileged areas. Right. Okay. So it's an opportunity for us to give back while we're getting so much mm -hmm. more back. Uh, it's a win-win situation. Up with people does that everywhere in the world we go to. In the Philippines, we've been doing this since 2007. 
So this is our fifth visit to the country, mm. and we're really building bridges, mm -hmm. like um, your show talks about, and Apu People talks about building bridges of understanding, uh, creating those relationships, and learning from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a win-win situation. Like I mentioned, we're working again with Gawa Kalinga. Mm -hmm. We've been working with them for five years. Mm -hmm. Working with Bukas Palad. We're working with Litter of Light. We're working with so many great projects where our participants have the opportunity to learn mm -hmm. about the current situation in the country, in that community, at the same time that they're offering a, a hand or two to go out there and, and do some labor. Mm -hmm. So leave some impact behind. And for instance, uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow, it's Friday, the group is split throughout the city in several different sites doing service. One of the sites, for instance, we have is GK Gawakalinga Baseco. Mm -hmm. And th we've been there every year, and we interact with the kids. We help to teach English lessons. We help to do uh, cleanups in the community. Mm. And in a certain way, the biggest advantage we have is the personal relationships mm -hmm. we build. Some of the kids that were there remember the staffs, the staff members that are coming back. Right. They remember the names of the previous cast <laughs> members. <laughs> really, really, you really. know, and they send send the so and so hello for me. Send me a picture, and just yesterday I was looking on the internet. The current people here were sharing with the previous people that came here. Oh, I remember, I remember. So they, they it goes around in so many interesting ways. That's that's a great thing, you know. A lot of times, uh, people feel you said something really uh, very important. You said you learn from each other, you know, which is is an interesting and a very important thing. A lot of times, people think, well, uh, you're coming in and you're just giving. But you're receiving an awful lot as well. And you've been at this now how many years? Uh, um, six years. I traveled in 2006, and I've been with up with people arranging all the tours in Asia since 2007. And, and Mark, how about yourself? I've been with them for three and a half years okay. now. So I've done, uh, I've done two Asian tours now. And you started off as one of the, the participants. One of the participants. How about you, Mark? Myself, I've been a staff member for three and a half okay. years. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm not quite as talented, musically <laughs> talented <laughs> as uh, Luis here. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so you're, uh, you're, you're obviously not a Yank. No. <laughs> you're, you're out of Great Britain, <laughs> are you? I am. I'm from Manchester in Manchester, the UK. Manchester, yeah. okay. Yeah, I grew up there, there, there are a couple of guys in a band or something from up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a small band. There's right? a little, little, little band. Well, that's that, uh, the, I think the one you're thinking of is uh, Liverpool, which <laughs> is Liverpool, which that's the Beatles. Right, yeah. That's the Beatles, yeah. A couple of guys was Oasis, if you remember. Oasis, Oasis yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were from, from Manchester, uh, Manchester, right? Manchester, yeah. yeah, so yeah. And we hear a lot about Manchester, I guess, but I, I don't... I've been in, in London a few mm -hmm. times, but... Uh, I've never had the chance to travel around like like you guys mm -hmm. have done with the the idea of of doing community work and then doing a performance mm -hmm. and you know like I said it's usually a, a an airplane ride a taxi ride a hotel a meeting venue and then back to the back to the airport again. So you, you know? don't have a chance to really no, see. No, no. I mean, and usually if I found a place I liked. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would try to take two or three days sometime mm -hmm. and go on a, on a short vacation, you mm -hmm. know, to make it. Uh, but not often did that happen either, you know. So I think it's great. Uh, you said that you had some interesting experiences. Can you, why don't you give, a, give me one that, that isn't going to get anybody in trouble? <laughs> oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> well, if you don't mind, if you don't mind just jumping in. Yeah, sure. Something you just said right now about mm. you haven't had the chance yet to experience. Yeah. Up with people just created a new project. For that somebody over, over 29? No. Yes, <laughs> and you know it. So we exploring uh, this project for the first time and have the owner to do the very first, as we call Cast X for mm -hmm. Up with People experience. Mm -hmm. So Cast X is in Manila right now, mm -hmm. and they also are some of the parents some mm -hmm. other sisters and brothers, host families from other cities. Oh, really? Uh, alumni from the program, or people that just want to know more and have an experience such as the one that we offer. And so they're just supplementing or, or coming around and, and yes, being yes. something added to the, exactly. to the, to the program. So we, we, di we did that. We have our 100 young people from 20 countries, mm -hmm. and then we have about 15 more from the CAS X. I see. So okay. now we actually, with 115 people in the city, doing volunteer work all over, and they actually working side by side as well. Hmm. So you have now different generations as well contributing 
for something good. Well, that, no, that's great. You know, for my generation, you could probably uh, maybe furnish wheelchairs or <laughs> you know, whatever. Of course to not. Go with you it. got a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think it's I think it's really wonderful. And and the timing, uh, you're going to. You said it was 18 to 29. Yeah. 18 to 29, which is yeah, that's a nice nice age. Range, yeah. And. Uh, what have some of the alumni done? I know you're an alumni mm -hmm. and you've gone to work for them. Mm -hmm. What typically, do people stay in touch with you after? Yes, um, Mark and I were actually talking about mm -hmm. that yesterday. For instance, Appleview has about 21,000 alumni oh, wow. throughout the 47 years of the organization. And from like over 100 countries. And I think in that way, that's one of the interesting things is if you think from a networking perspective, from a different range of professions. So we have people that work with the government, mm -hmm. people that work with NGOs, people that work with their own businesses, became mm -hmm. CEOs of companies, right. or, you know, like in the arts mm -hmm. and the sciences. So interesting enough, the experience of Up With People, it's a six month experience that could also be one year, but that experience you take with you for your whole life. And those, those so those people are coming, uh, Six months they're on the road with you around yes. the world, or maybe a year on the yes, road uh, yes. with you. Because we have like a, s a two months. We have a second semester now. Mm -hmm. We found that um, a lot of young people nowadays, they, they, they prefer to, um, it's, it's instant. People sign up instantly to our program. They, they decide they want to go away for six months, and they do it within a, sometimes a two-week two week period. They say, hey, mom, dad, I'm off. I'm going to go around the world. Yeah. I just found this great site. I went to see the show. My friend just traveled in it, and we found that doing a six-month program uh, fits better with semesters and the current education right, system. Right. But with a second semester program, what we do is we drill down and focus in what the second semester students would like to focus on, be it more show, be it more community service, be it more education. Mm -hmm. And so we'll offer them internships throughout their second semester. Oh, I see. And they can Good. really grow that way. And, and you have pretty much an equal number of uh, male and female, or? I think you asked me in the other interview yeah. as well, <laughs> I remember. It's about two for one. Normally it's about 60% female, 40% uh, male, about You that. find that everywhere, you know, yes. I, yeah. I I, are they more adventurous, do you think? think women are just or? taking over the world. Yeah, right? take, <laughs> taking the lead. And are we well, they, they've got all my money. I that. <laughs> <laughs> no, th no I, I don't mean that in, uh -huh. a, in a bad way at all. No, I, I do believe I'm really interested in mm -hmm. the fact that that uh, ladies are given a chance to True. go and do these things because they're going to be the, the next leaders as well. I of think as, as certainly as my country develops and, and sure. in Great Britain, you already had a prime minister we who did, was yeah. a woman. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to see more and more of that. The, yeah, the president of Brazil now is Bra a woman. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And, and we notice, I mean, even here in the Philippines, uh, we've been meeting great women that are taking the lead and creating a lot of positive change. For instance, up with people, just yesterday we did an international leadership roundtable. Mm -hmm. So we brought 10 leaders from the country. And we have at least half of them were female and half of them male. And it was a wonderful mix no, because I you I bring agree. all that yeah. uh, different dynamics and the different points of view. And at the end, they all talking about the same things with a little bit of a different vision. Well, that's the beauty of it is we don't see the world the same way. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. ladies do not see the world the same way that men do. And sometimes we're a little bit more aggressive than we, we need to be. Yes. <laughs> and uh, maybe the world would do better with more women leaders yes. <laughs> over, uh, overall, you know. Yeah, and I think and up this with gives them a chance helping. to go yeah. around. Of course, yeah, if you're going around the world, how many countries typically would it, would you visit in six months? The tour normally is about three cultural regions. Mm -hmm. So let's say we'd go to North America, Latin America, Europe, Asia. And within each uh, country or region, we do maybe a multi multiplicity of countries. Mm -hmm. So Europe, we normally tend to visit four to five. Mm -hmm. um, in Asia, this is the first time we did a tour in two countries in Asia in the same tour. So we just had three great weeks in Taiwan okay, great. and now Philippines. And in Taiwan, the group had the chance to perform for the National Day celebration of the country. Oh, great. Invited by the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs. And we performed for the president, met the president, took a great picture with him. So I think, imagine if you were 18, 
to 29 and you're traveling the world and having this kind of experiences. Uh, and then coming to the Philippines, we were in Puerto Princesa for a week. Mm -hmm. So we performed there for about 3,000 people, celebrating the underground river. Mayor Hagedorn to Puerto Princesa city government mm -hmm. was supporting us. And it was a beautiful stay. Mm -hmm. We planted trees. We interacted with the local indigenous population. We went to the mangrove areas. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a very well-rounded experience. Mm -hmm. And then coming to Metro Manila here, and then you find all the big buildings and the different sides and poverty is very extreme and mm -hmm. they are hands-on working in some of these underprivileged communities. So it's a really eye-opening experience and it's an opportunity like we were talking before to give but also to get. So it's a, a positive exchange. No, that's great, you know, because the receiving side and one of the nice things probably about coming to the Philippines is uh, most of the people can at least even if they're not well educated, can communicate on a on a certain level of English, right? That's uh, correct. And That's certainly right, the yeah. the educated can make it everywhere. So it's a lot easier to kind of get something back than you do a lot of the time if you're having to work through interpreters or only work through people that that can do the language. Which Taiwan, I my experience in Taiwan is I find more people speak Japanese than they do English <laughs> because of the, the factories and things then there. Yeah, uh, and the business relationships. Right, uh, right. Dozo, dozo. No, <laughs> more dozo. Dozo. <laughs> yeah, so I feel right at home there, but uh, it's a, it is a, an interesting uh, place that is very different from any place else. You know, usually English is, if you go to a hotel, English is the extra language that people speak. In Taiwan, Japanese is the it extra is the language, language that people speak. Very service oriented. Yeah. No, it's very interesting. It's very dif different from, say, working in the, the capital, Taipei, to mm -hmm. where we, we also went to Changhua County, which oh is, okay. is a lot more rural. Right, right. You know, you're riding around, I think we've both done this, you know, on the scooters in the middle of the rice mm -hmm. fields. and. Um, you go to a store and you you, you order and, and of more often than not you know people they wouldn't speak English to you so right. you're having to communicate with your hands and make and an get effort. Your message I've been doing that my whole life. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. But and people are very warm in the countryside right. as well. Mm -hmm. They're very sure. giving, very sharing, uh, very community oriented. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was also an experience to visit temples. Yes, balance too. Right, mm -hmm. we were in different. Uh, we went to visit a rice museum, mm. right? Imagine how different it is for someone that always goes to the supermarket, yeah. <laughs> actually gets to understand how food is produced. Right, right. A lot of different experiences in that mm. direction. Good. And you said that you've been teaching <coughs> English to the Sorry. kids, uh, <coughs> and some of the kids in, in uh, Manila here. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other, the other activities that you have? We work with uh, Litter of Light. Mm -hmm. And it's an organization, uh, my shelter foundation, that has one of the, their projects. They do uh, implement water bottles, empty bottles, mm -hmm. filled uh, with <coughs> bleach mm -hmm. and water. And that mix helps to, uh, through a hole in the roof, helps to let the light come in and light up a house that had no lights before. Oh, I heard something about that. I now, say that again. You've got it a pet ba bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 uh, I think it's one liter of light. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the idea of um, very very cheap solution for providing light for communities that don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. So some of our group perform with them. They had an event this Saturday. Uh, was the Adobo Run mm -hmm. at Mall of Asia? So we did a show okay. there. So super fun. And also we had some of our members volunteers to go to their um area to learn on how to do the bottles how to prepare the ceiling how to do everything so they can also help to multiply the, their efforts and help to teach more people to find s some positive solutions for their lighting conditions so what they do they, they they drill a drill hole, a hole and, yeah. and they put a pet bottle that is filled with with uh, it's a mix it's a special mix of bleach and a few other things but it's very inexpensive. It just captures, <laughs> captures the light. light and can yeah. give you the equivalent of a, like a 55 uh, w w watts, watts bulb. And it's wow. not only just use it providing light. It's, it's using less resources. It well doesn't sure, require yeah. electricity. Uh, and you can use recycled plastic bottles right. to be able to do this. Which are yeah. plentiful. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Know where we go and right then now. they are very excited to also work with us because of the reach that Upward People mm -hmm. has around the world. So we're looking to establishing a more f form of partnership to mm -hmm. help to 
um, share some of their best efforts around. And also for us, it's a great opportunity as they have um, created a great impact here in the Philippines for us to partner with them. So it's, it's been very productive. This is the first time we're working with them. Uh, at the same time, we work with Gawa Kalinga mm -hmm. for five years already, and we're looking forward to continue working mm -hmm. with them. And so many great projects. We work in Smoky Mountain as okay, well. Okay, right. So, so depending on the year, we do the projects slightly different. Um, and I think in a certain way, it's an opportunity for us also to offer variety mm -hmm. for our participants mm -hmm. so they can get to experience different projects in town. And because it's just six months, they're going to be doing something new most of the time because exactly, it's a different yeah. country and different people, different challenges, different I suppose. Needs. Yeah, and the needs are different, right. And every yeah. week, every week we are in a different community. Mm -hmm. So it's also a very intense mm -hmm. program because if you think about like just the production side of it, mm -hmm. we are touring production. So every week in a whole different city, setting up one, two, three, four shows, doing it for the audiences. Uh, sometimes we do public shows in parks. Sometimes we do private shows in theaters. Sometimes we do um, like the National Day Celebration mm -hmm. in Taiwan. But Upward People historically did four times the Super Bowl half times in the U.S. Um, well, that's, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a deal. I know. <laughs> you know doing I the know. Super Bowl is a big thing. Man, and then you know. twice recently the Rose Parade. Okay. So the official New Year years in the United States. Macy's Parade, two Olympic Games. Several times Upward People visited with uh, heads of states, presidents. Uh, even with the Pope received the group 14 times in Rome. Well really? Went to your hometown as well. Yeah, we just right? went to Brazil. That's mm -hmm. a good project. Mark worked with uh, with us. Also, we were in Rio for the Rio Plus 20, the United Nations oh Conference. Oh, right, that recent one. Yeah. On sustainable development. So we just took the group to Brazil. So it's a really interesting uh, dynamics of big world events that we able to join. You, n you know, you said that this uh, started 47 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, how? <laughs> it's it's a long story. I mean, the the beauty the beauty of it, and Mark and I um, been talking about this too. Is traces even back to the Philippines. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. So, for instance, the founder of Up with People, seen that music was a great way to communicate with people around the world, mm -hmm. and that's been growing throughout the years. You want to share a little bit more about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, the, the the movement came about '65 when uh, you know time times were changing, mm -hmm. and well, you know Bob Dylan there, and and people were were angry, and there was down with this, down with that. Yeah, I was there. You know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, You're too young for that. <laughs> no, no, no. I was I was over in Vietnam during that time. Oh wow. Yes. Wow. So. Well, we came up with up with people. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, the whole message has been about um, building bridges of understanding between communities and using mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. as a common language. Because with music, you don't need to, you don't you don't need to speak the local language. You know, you c it's so powerful the message that you can spread. So it was the idea, of and and a, a single uh, one person actually thought this up, right? Or yeah. Or he had the so idea. So the main the main founder, his name is Blentum Belk. Uh, but he was surrounded by a very positive, optimistic mm -hmm. team of musicians, mm -hmm. inclu including the Colwell brothers, Herb Allen. And they were on a tour around the world in the 50s, coming to the Philippines as well. Mm -hmm. So at the time, President Ramon Magsaysay mm -hmm. invited them to perform for him at Malacanian. Mm -hmm. So they were at Malacanian, and the president was so thrilled with the content of their music. Because Up With People here um, always learns also a local song everywhere oh we I go. See, see, so yeah. we also sing in Tagalog, and they sang in Tagalog, and the president really canceled other appointments and had uh, them invited to stay in the country. And at the time was the Huck Rebellion, so mm -hmm. he wanted them with their positive music to help to end the rebellion. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, they had to go on a tour around the world. So they had, uh, through the, I think the Signal Corps at the time, mm -hmm. recorded because the president asked them the songs so they could be heard throughout the country. That, that's another thing I think that uh, when I talked to you before, uh, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about this in the, the second half of the show, we're running out of time mm -hmm. here, 
is the fact that it's all positive music. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do is positive on that side, just as we try to do positive things on this show. And, uh, and when people go to see the show, they're going to see hip hop, they're going to see rap, they're going to see all of these things. But it's always from a positive yes. uh, position, isn't it? That's that's correct. And we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about uh, the show that's coming up on Saturday, uh, right after we take this very short break. We'll be right back, so don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm.